Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper tutorial, uh, we want to model this kinetic toy in Grasshopper from scratch. So I'm going to show you step by step how we can make it. And as you can see, by rotating these circles, we're going to update this kinetic toy and produce different results. So this is actually uh, how we're going to make it in Grasshopper. Also, if you just go here, you can see that we're going to use a graph mapper. Uh, let me put the bifocals plug in here. I'm going to use a graph mapper to produce different forms. So I can actually have this as a form, and I can also combine it with another graph mapper. For example, this busy distribution. If I want to, to give it a new form. Okay, first of all, uh, let me explain uh, what we have to do from scratch. Uh, if you look at this uh, kinetic toy, the first step is to make the circles. For example, I'm going to use a simple range graph mapper thing, which I'm going to explain to produce the initial circles. Uh, we can control the number of the uh, count of these things and also we can control the spacing, which I'm going to explain. Uh, after we produce these curves, uh, what we want to do is to produce a series of lines from them. That's really simple. As you can see, we're going to use this line SDL to draw them. And for this tutorial, to make it easy as possible, I'm going to give that a simple a fixed height. Actually, we can play with this and produce different results for the circles down there. But for now, we're just going to use a fixed length for the lines. After we produce the lines, uh, we have to produce the circles that are actually the circles that are fitting uh, on these lines. And as you can see, a good thing about this uh, tutorial is that uh, exactly the curve we have for this uh, circles is going to also uh, happen for the base curve, okay? So we're going to use that as the base curve and then what we have to do here uh, is to rotate them. So as we rotate these circles, uh, let me just increase that. As we rotate these circles, these lines are going to go down, right? They have to be put on the circle which is underneath them. So we're going to move those lines uh, underneath that. Here is the next spot. Let me just turn everything off. Okay. These are the lines and turn on the final results, okay? These are the lines which are going to go down and sit on these set of circles here. We are also going to rotate this center circle uh, uh, like 180 degrees from the other sets to make this, uh, here you can see it, make this little uh, sphere down here to give it a little bit of an artistic look, okay? So that is actually going to go higher. Uh, the main location is here, but we are going to move it a little bit up, so it's going to just move differently from the main uh, circles, which we're going to model from scratch. Uh, okay, let's get started from scratch, and what I want to do is to take the first step. I know modeling Grasshopper is a little bit hard, and a little bit tricky. So I will try to explain this step by step. For those who want to know how I found this, uh, found a solution to this, I actually done a lot of research, maybe like two or three days to make this tutorial easy for you to understand. So I made it into steps. But for you, if you want to model something from scratch, remember there has to be some research behind uh, the algorithm, okay? You can watch movies uh, if you want, if, if there is an, a, anything available on the internet, so it can tr uh, help you to understand it better. You can model it in Rhino and try to figure it out. But for me, I actually use lots of the trial and error and debugging to find the best solution for you. Okay, the first one is to draw the circles and uh, let me put the bifocals plug in, is to go to the curve and in the primitive we will have this circle tool, okay? That's really easy, we just have to put it on the canvas and you can see it's going to give us a circle with a default radius of 1, which is this small circle we have on the XY plane. But what we want to do here is to give it 
a series of radiuses, so it's going to make a series of circles. Uh, you can search for, uh, double click on the canvas and search for series, like this, or you can go to the set sequence and find this series tool here. We can also use range. Uh, actually, it's, it's similar. We want to say that perhaps we want from this range of circle radius to start and end and the number of circle. This series is going to give it like step by step the distance between the circles and it's going to help us to also define the thickness. So it's easier and it really depends on what you need. Do you want to control the circles? Uh, actually the length of the whole of the project or you want to control the thickness. I think that the thickness is better so I'm going to give this to the radius. Okay. Uh, the starting is the radius we want to give for the starting circle. As you can see here this is going to control the center, the radius of the first circle and we're going to give that to the same uh, the same number to the step. The reason here is that because we want to have a consistent uh, thickness between those circles so that is going to make us uh, make that uh, program and the algorithm a little bit easier to understand uh, we can say that this is like thickness so we can understand what's happening uh, the next part is the number of the circles we need for example we say from 3 to 30 uh, and remember that you have to just type this double dash with two decimals okay we have uh, integer here so we don't want to give that number and here we go we can just increase the number of the circles we need and that's fine for example for this one it's 15 and we are okay with this okay uh, the next part is to move these circles a little bit up and give them a wave like motion right the exact thing that we want to see at the top of the kinetic toy which is this one uh, what I want to do is to simply move these circles up so I'm going to say go to transform and use this move in the occludian or just simply search for move in the Z direction just have to double click and find Z and turn off the circles and now we just have to give this uh, somehow a graph mapper okay for example if I just type for graph and go for graph mapper okay you can also find it here in the params menu let me just go show you your input here we have the graph mapper okay if we just define a graph type for example let's go with sign to give this a sine wave. How can we connect this to the Z? There's nothing in the graph mapper, right? And how can we produce this uh, sine graph? Uh, what I want to do here is to, uh, if you double click on this, you can see it's like from zero to one in the X direction, right? And it's going to give you a zero to one output on the Y direction. So if I give this like zero, uh, let me just show you here this is like 0 and this is like 1 we have to give this a number between 0 and 1 between this graph mapper and it's going to convert that into a sine distribution right so that's really easy uh, we can go with a range set and a range tool the range tool is going to help us so we pick a range component the domain by default is 0 to 1 which is exactly what we need but remember the step is really important because we have to have the same numbers as the same circles we have here right we have 15 circles right 15 circles so what I have to do here is to just give that to the steps and just check this out this is going to give us 16 number because when you divide a domain which is actually between 0 and 1. For example, if I say I want uh, 2, this is the division, right? Two sections for the domain. It's going to give you three numbers, right? It's going to be uh, 0, 0 0.5, and 1. So that is going to actually give you one 
additional number. What we have to do here is to give this step like x minus 1. That means uh, reduce the input just by 1. Remember we have to give it an x, so I'm going to go here and type x minus 1 and use this expression to lower that to exactly the 15 number we need. right? And now we can give that to the graph mapper. If I give this to the z factor, uh, you really can't see that. That's really small. It's somehow between 0 and 1. So that is really small movement in the z direction. Uh, if you want to multiply that, we can just simply go to the math. And in the operators, we can use the multiplication to mul multiply that even higher. So why not? I'm going to multiply that. And for example, the 0 is fine because we don't want to move it up. But the 1 is, for example, we can say from a 1 to 20 with two decimals. That is going to be the maximum height. Okay, Remember that this number is going to multiply that with 1. right? And that is going to go higher. So now, if I just increase this number, you can see that that's the maximum height. And let's just increase that in case we want more height. That's it. We can move these handles to produce different results. So remember that you can always play with the graph handles and if you exactly want a uh, one sign graph I usually make this a little bit bigger because we can't control exactly the graph and put this at the center of this line okay this is the center line that is going to help you even if you make it bigger unfortunately we can't control exactly with it where this handle is it's in a user interface so I'm just going to give that if you want to make this happen. Okay, now that we have the circles, we have made the first step, which is making the circles. Uh, let me give that to a curve so we can just turn everything off. Remember, this is the graph mapper. You can combine it with another graph mapper if you want to. For example, we can just say, we need to combine it with the second graph mapper. And you can see it's something weird. So if I just go, for example, a conic distribution, let me actually increase the number of these circles and the distance so you can see what's happening. Okay? You can see that this is actually helping you. Uh, another one is like a Bezier distribution, which you can control the handle. For now, it's going to go to none, and that's okay. Okay. Now we have the circles. Uh, what we have to do here is to draw the lines downwards, right? Uh, what I want to do here is to extract the points. And there's a trick here because how can we extract this point for the, for example, this circle? Assume that we need this circle. We need this point and also this point from one circle, right? And for example, we also need the center of this uh, as the points we want to uh, work with. So there is two parts. First, we have to extract two points from the circle. And let's just talk about this one. Uh, for uh, example, if there's a circle, and let's just make this OK. Sorry for doing that, I guess that I have to use the control key. Okay, so if this is a circle, assume that this is the starting point of a circle, that is going to be a zero. And if we go around the circle just one turn, it's going to be zero to one, okay? And this point is going to be simply 0 0.5. So that is really easy to extract two points from it. We can do that by going to the curve and using this tool, evaluate curve. Remember, if you want to make it from 0 to 1, 
you just have to right click and reparameterize. Again, if you don't know about this flatten, graft, uh, simplify, reparameterize thing, I can put up, I will put up a video, a free video we have uh, about flatten and graft. And if you want to know more, you can enroll in our course in powercourse.com, which is actually, we have lots of lessons in the data management section. So I'm going to just reparameterize this and make it from zero to one and give it two parameters. For example, uh, I can go to the parameter, uh, set multiple numbers, say zero, 0 0.5, commit change. And now you can see that we have this. Okay. As you can see, it's not giving all of the circles. It's something weird happening here. Uh, the reason here is that we have two inputs for the parameter. It's like 0, 0 0.5 and we have 23 circles. And what's happening here is that 0, this is a little bit weird, but it's really important to understand this. Again, watch the flatten graph tutorial. We have talked about data trees. And if you want to know more, you can just go in our course. But for now, let me explain it as simple as possible. Okay. So we had two numbers, zero and one. We have 23 circles. What's going to happen is that the zero is going to go to the first circle and it's going to extract this point. Then one is going to go to the second circle and it's going to be this point instead of this, right? And because the other circles don't have any number besides them, it's going to repeat this one till the end. So how can we fix that? Uh, there are two ways. It's either repeating this 0, 1, 0, 1 for all of them or just grafting the input of the curve. What's going to happen is that we say each of these curves are separate group. They are not in one group, okay? They are in separate groups, so multiply them with this 0, 1. So that is a trick you have to learn when working in Grasshopper. I know it's a little bit hard, for uh, especially for those who don't have uh, uh, experience in programming, but for now you can see how easy it is to graft it. So what's going to happen is that you can see that each of these circles has a group. Just dismiss these zeros here, okay? And each of them has two points, so that is going to give us a series of points. Uh, we also had this plane of the circle which was the center of the circle. I'm going to set a point here and give it back to the circle. That's how we can control the movement of the circle, okay? That's even easier. Or I forgot to give you the explanation. So when you connect a point to a plane, what's going to happen is that it's assuming that it's an XY plane, okay? So I wanted to also explain this part. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, we need that point too, so I'm going to bring that forward in the algorithm and as you can see we have two set of points this point and this point right again I'm just making this because of educational purposes not for anything else I don't need to just put all of these points points uh, params on the canvas but just to make it easy okay and the next part is to bring all of them into one point. So I'm going to say I have this point, I have these points, and again the problem here is that they are not in the same group, okay? This one is the group 0 and these points are in like 0, 0, 0, 0. So what I want to do here is to flatten this and actually put all of those points in one group which is exactly what we need, but there is a problem again let me show you with display point list. The number of these is like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 till the end. And what we need here is to just make a curve from this for the future. Uh, what we need here, just to make that uh, a little trick you can learn here, is to go to vector point and use this sort points. It's going to sort the points in the x direction, actually. As you can see here, it's going to sort 
sort points in the x, y, z direction. So x is fine for us. And now if I just turn on the points, you can see it's like 0, 1, 2, 3 till the end. That was a trick I wanted to give you if you wanted to sort a series of points. Uh, but for now, let's just put that aside and go for the next step. The next step here is to draw the lines downwards, right? Okay. And what I want to do here is to uh, move them down. Uh, I can just draw a line in the curve, primitive, and in the line SDL. Okay. I'm just thinking how I can explain this even better. But for now, let's just go like line SDL, draw these points in the direction Z. And as you can see, it's drawing a line in the Z direction, which we want to go downwards. So in the expression, I'm going to set, say, minus x. And now I'm going to give that a length. Turn off everything, the points. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you what's going to happen on these curve. As you can see, it's exactly similar to this top section. Right? That is the second part. So now we can just pull this as the second step and go for the next step, which is drawing the circles down here. Okay, this is a little bit tricky, so let me explain in a whiteboard. For example, we have these lines. And we actually be straight line, right? and we want to draw First of all, we have to have an axis because this is going to be the handle, right? We want to rotate this handle so we can rotate those circles. So we have to define an axis. This is example for the example is going to be the axis. Okay. And assume that this is the top curve we have. So what we have to do is that as we have this curve and as it's rotating around this one, it has to have a full circle around uh, the location. Okay. Let me explain it like this. Again, I have to move this curve down. So it's going to be exactly like that. This axis is not really that important. It can be here. It can be here. It actually doesn't have to intersect with the curve. Okay, So you can actually do it uh, from here to here. That's not really important. The most important thing here is that we have to copy this curve down there and just draw a circle like this between these two curves. Okay? There are other ways. I'm going to explain this. There are other ways to make these circles. You can have different length for these lines. For example, it's going to give you another curve. We have we can have a different line curve for the other uh, the up the down part of the circles. Okay. So to make it as simple as possible, I just gave the fixed lengths for all of those lines. I gave a simple curve at the top and copied that copied it downwards okay so the circles are easy to make so that is really making the lesson as easy as you can uh, learn okay but I can make it complicated I can defer these length I can def uh, make this curve another curve to make more interesting cur circles if you want to make it for example a more artistic view of this downward circles okay so remember that you can play with that for now to make the circles uh, we made this line SDL and I'm going to pick up this little tool here point on curve in the curve tool and breaking bring it at the end to pick this points remember you can do things differently in grasshopper and that's fine N uh, not a big deal because for example we could just have moved these points in the Z direction down with this number, right? It's not really that important, but as I'm teaching you, I wanted to show you that you can also learn like line SDL. We have some exercise to get grasshopper and learn it even more experience in the grasshopper field, okay? I hope that this helps. Uh, as we make these points, 
what we want to do is to move these points again exactly down to make that a little uh, I mean same curve down here right so now I'm going to use a move in the Z direction and I'm going to give it a number slider so I can control maybe we have to increase that yeah remember that this is really important for example if I put it here there is no way you can make an axis for these circles the problem is that the axis is going to be outside the upper circles and it's not going to intersect them so how can they rotate that is wrong right so just move that as much as possible as you don't see any intersection between this line so for example if this is the center it's going to intersect here so I'm going to just push it a little bit down okay that's fine now what I want to do is to draw the circles so I'm going to go to the curve primitive and use this circle with three points let me explain uh, what you want to do here is to give the point A here give the point B here and for the point C I want to give you a trick okay actually how can we find the point C on the plane uh, or in the space uh, I found just simply moving this a little bit in the Y direction just a little bit is going to give you the circles because it's trying to make the circles in this plane and it's actually going to give you the right answer so I'm going to just move them a little bit in the Y direction you can just actually say like 0 0.01 just to show you it's just like a really really small move but you can see it's going to help us to get those circles really easy right that's it so remember that we had this length to put them down if we want to make it more you can just increase that number and the graph mapper can update the shape for example this one and this multiplication is going to give you different heights that is the number of circles the spacing okay let's go back now we have the step of the circles we can put it here and I'm going to actually to rotate these circles around an axis for example if I look at here as the front you can see that I can't run an axis here right so what should we do we can just simply increase this part so we can see an opening inside that okay based on the project you have you have to do that again we can have different line length for these parts but I'm just going to try to give you the sim the most simple way we can do that okay so remember that you can do it differently if you want to okay so how can we make the centers it's really easy let me just extract the points we had here and bring it a little bit forward and let's do that okay what I want to do is to use the project component project we need to use this one and you can also find it in transform a fine project okay and what I want to do is to project that into a plane I mean an X Y plane right extract the origin and just move this a little bit down that's it the XY is not really important the Z is important and if I just want to set view to front I guess no it's right set view to right 
you can see that I can bring it a little bit down. Remember that this is really important because if you put that too much up or too much, uh, too much down is okay, but if you put that too much up, it's not going to give you a, a good rotation. So I'm going to just make it like this and bring it up. Remember that the X, Y is not really important. The Z is important, okay? And remember that if you just put that too much close, you can't put the circles because you have a thickness for the pipe inside the shaft, okay? So let's just go to the view perspective. And let's set the C plane to top, okay? Here we go. We have the center of the shaft. And now we can rotate the circles. So I'm going to just bring this a little bit forward and let's go rotate them. So I'm going to say uh, transform and use this rotate 3D tool. So I want to rotate these circles. The center is going to be this center. Turn everything off. The axis is going to be the X axis, right? We just turn this off because I know it's going to confuse you. The rotation axis is going to be actually an X. So I have to give that here. Just turn that on because we want to see the answer, okay? And let's just make that a degree for the angle and make it from zero to maybe a 1000. The reason I'm doing this is to have more rotations for turns, okay? As you can see, I can rotate it. And we are good to go, okay? Remember that if you just put that too much up, it's not going to help you rotate. Even if it's rotating, in the real world, how can this rotate? The only way you can do that is to put a handle around this, okay? So that is also important. So remember to really focus on this part and make it exactly through the circles, okay? Now that we have it, uh, we can see that these circles are rotating and we are good to go. Okay, now as we are rotating these circles, how can we define what's happening for these lines? For example, if I just zoom in on these two lines here, so I can explain it better. I hope so you, you see that in a good view. Uh, what's happening for this line is that it has to sit down on the outer part of the circle here, and this line has to go up and sit on here, right? So first of all, we need these points to find the answer. And finding this point is not really hard. What we have to do is to project these set of points at the up part onto the circle. So I'm going to go back and for example, here that we sorted the points, we have these points here, right? So let's just bring this a little bit forward and uh, project this on the circles. So I'm going to say project point. We can project the point. We can also find it in the vector point and project point section. So I'm going to project this point in the minus z direction because we want to bring it down, right? It's like minus Z. And the geometry is going to be like that. And here you see that as we rotate these circles, this is exactly a physical simulation because we are seeing it sitting on those circles, right? Okay, that's great. Now that we have these points, we have to work with the downward points. Okay, I, uh, let me just check this out. Where did we have them? I think it was somewhere like here. Yes, exactly. We had these points here. And now we are good to go. So what we have to do is to make a movement with a vector and vector two point 
to find the distance we have to move these lines. For example, this point has to move to this point, right? So we can say move it from here to here. That's it. If you want to see it, I can just show you with a uh, display vector display. This is just for educational purposes, but you can see what's happening here. So if I just rotate this, this is actually what we need. That is exactly what we need. And now we can just move those lines. So I'm going to say move. Uh, so what we have to do here is to move the lines. Uh, we had the circles, actually. We need the lines. Where is the line? I'm going to go to the Parms menu curve and find the lines here. Uh, I think that this was the lines, okay? So I'm going to give that to here and use it in the next step. So remember that we can just make this part as another step, which is making the circles and okay let's go and move these lines with this motion and we can turn off the lines and now turn also this line off and see what's happening let's just go and rotate it this is really exciting you can see that we are actually modeling the lines that's it okay now I'm going to turn off the circles also and reconstruct the circles after I've rotated the lines. This is the last step we have to take. So what I want to do here is to make the circles. Okay, now again we can go to the curve, use this point on curve tool to extract the top part, and now we have to play with these points to produce the circles. Okay, uh, first of all let me just turn on the point list so you can see the number as we sorted this thing. It's like 0, 1, 2, 3 till the end, right? Okay, now that we have these points, what we have to do is to actually connect this 0 to this 50, right? Or what we can do here is to pick up the center, which is, I think, 25, get rid of the rest, and uh, which is the center point, right? We need the center point. And then just make a radius for the circles, right? We are reconstructing the circles, so we have to do that. Uh, now what I'm going to do is to pick up the center first of all. Uh, I think we had that. Let's just get rid of these. So now let's select the f middle point from these points. I'm going to go to the sets and pick up the list item which you can see here and as I said it's going to be 0, 1, 2 till the end. Okay, How much points do we have? We have like 51. We can always extract the number of the data by just going to sets and using this simple little tool list length. That is really easy to extract, extract the length of the data. So I'm going to just say extract it. And if I give it to the index, as you can see, it's going to pick up the first one. Why? Because it's like 51. It's like 0 till, okay, let me show you this so you really understand what's happening. It's like 50, and the 51 is going to go to the center. So that is not what we need. What we need is to find the 25, which is this number, okay? And as you can see, it's like 51 here. So how can we convert the 51 into 25? It's really easy. It's like x minus 1, which is going to give you 50 divided by 2, right? It's going to say 50 divided by 2. So that's how you can do that. We can go and say x minus 1 divided by 2, and we will have it here. Okay, that's the center point, and it, this is the most important point we need here. The next part is to just pick up these points, right? So I'm going to go to the sets, 
in the list, I'm going to say split the list. I just need the first half of these points. Again, which is the point we want to split it? It's exactly like x minus 1 divided by 2. So I'm going to give that here. And as you can see, we have these points. If I just turn everything off, especially the points, I have the center and I have this one. If I turn off the center, you can see that we have the rest and the center. Okay. Now that we have that, we need to draw a circle. So I'm going to go and say curve and circle. The center of the circle has to be like, okay, this is really important. The center of the circle is to, going to be like this. Uh, let me explain. Uh, if we assume we had this point and we want to draw the circle, we have to bring it in this height and put it as the plane center and this as the radius, okay? So just take a look at this technique. I'm going to go to the vector and in the point section, I'm going to deconstruct these points. Deconstruct the center and deconstruct the rest of the points, okay? And now I'm going to make a, a construct point, which is a new set of points. And I'm going to use the x, y of this point, but the z of this point, okay? This is really important. We actually are making a series of points at the same location of the center, but the different height, okay? That's the fastest way you can do that. So it's going to be x, y, z. And you can see that's making these points. That is going to be the plane of those circles. And the radius is really simple. It's going to be the distance between these points and their points here. So I'm going to say uh, vector distance from this point to this point, give it to the radius. And that's it. And that's the way you can make the circles. Not really hard. I know it's a little bit complicated, but anyway, we just made it. So let's just give that a group. Also this group. And now we have the lines and we have the circles. Again, when we rotate it, it's going to update. Okay. That's the fastest way we can do it. Be sure to turn on also the centroids because it has to be inside the circles. If it's not, it's not a real thing. You know, if you fabricate it, it's not going to work. So this is really important. And as you can see here, again, if I change that, remember to go to the view right, take a look at this, uh, move that origin a little bit down. So it's always, okay, and set view to the perspective. I don't know why this seaplane keeps on changing, but anyway, that's it. And that's you. That's how you can make it happen. Okay. And the last step is to uh, uh, give this a little bit of a visualization. Okay, we can go for the circles. There's the circles here at the end for the visualization of the circles. Uh, we can actually offset them in two directions. For example, if we have this circle, we can offset that in two directions. So it's like minus 1 and 1 if we want a complete thickness of 2. Okay. So let's just say we want this thickness from 0 0.1 to 10. I'm going to say this is the thickness. Actually, we had a thickness here, if you remember, but 
this is the distance between the circles but maybe we just want a different thickness for here I mean the thickness it's better to say widths right it's not the thickness so I'm going to say curve offset in the distance I'm going to say minus x divided by 2 as we said we wanted to give this two directions x divided by 2 and minus x divided by 2 that is going to help us to have this exactly as what we want and then we can just loft them together surface loft with a shift key and here we have it that's it then we can just extrude that extr extrude or you can find it in the free form here okay I'm just giving you a little bit time so you can understand this okay remember surface free form extrude and in the z direction we can give this the thickness which is actually this is really the thickness okay everything is working and if I bake it you can see it in Rhino right uh, let's just decrease the widths a little bit okay for the lines uh, let's just make this another group uh, for the lines I guess we have to go here we can make a pipe from them so I'm going to surface pipe and define a radius for example 0 0.1 to 2 and we have these little pipes here okay that's the visualization of the pipes done the last part is the visualization of the circles so let's just bring them here okay uh, I think that I missed the part that we wanted to put this center point a little bit down okay I know this is going to be complicated so uh, perhaps uh, I don't know I can give you the algorithm or I can teach you but let's just do that for those who want to really learn an advanced lesson we have to fix this part right the good thing about uh, grasshopper is that you can just fix it from here right this is where we use the curve where is this going here okay and what we have to do is to just fix this and then add it up to this curve that's how you can debug in grasshopper okay uh, let's do that I'm going to again pick a list item and as I said we can get a list length x minus 1 divided by 2 pick this one right and rotate this so again we have to also pick the center where is the center these are the centers we also have this center then we're going to rotate it rotate this circle from this center in the x-axis and in the degree I'm going to type 180 degrees and now we have that like this then I'm going to insert this okay let's just bring everything forward 
and we can insert this into this series of curves right in the circles so I'm going to say I want to bring that back into that circle sets list and I'm going to use replace items that's exactly why I wanted to teach you replace items so I'm going to say replace in this list this item and the index is actually the same x minus 1 divided by 2 and if I just turn everything off you can see that we have this and we are good to go we can give that to the circles everything is going to be fine and you can see that this is going way up so it's a good visualization why don't we just give that a where was the top of this point it was like that why don't we just give this up sphere so for the visualization we can see it but remember it has to be smaller than this part okay so it goes through it if you don't want to make it big just let's just decrease the widths and that's fine okay it's going to go through that okay that was a good thing to remember that we always uh, we can just define and change the steps we need in grasshopper that is the best thing about grasshopper okay now that we had this I guess that we have to extract the circles and visualize them maybe here and let's just do that we have the pipes remember that we could rotate it and at the top you can see it's happening this little guy coming out and here we go okay let's go and convert them into a series of real parts uh, we need also the centers so I'm going to say where is the center I think here it is bring it forward okay now we need an YZ plane for these points so I'm going to say YZ plane and circle and remember that we have to give this a radius that is not bigger than this gap so for example 0 0.123 yep now that we have this we can just say surface and boundary surface why don't we just convert these circles with these circles remember to flatten them so you can see that this is the whole part right again if we want to give them a little bit of thickness I'm going to move that in the if we need that thickness it's going to be minus t divided by 2 and t divided by 2 right and that's going to give you a complete thickness so I'm going to say move in the x direction for example the thickness is going to be that much so I'm going to say t or thickness from 0 0.1 to 10 maybe this is good and then I'm going to extrude that back 
in the same but minus okay we had this like minus x divided by 2 mm, assume that we need a thickness of t it's minus t divided by 2 and go back like t right it's going to give you complete thickness so I'm going to say minus t divided by 2 and a complete thickness so I'm going to say minus x I guess okay sorry this is the thickness this for example this one's the thickness yeah that's right it's just like x so it's okay that's it and remember that you have to give the rotating circles so we had to give this rotating circles right so if when we rotate it the visualization is also going to rotate that's for the visualization of the circles now we have to also make the shaft so I'm going to the rod you want to put inside so I'm going to get a curve and interpolation and connect the, all of those points we had here to make the line and then I'm going to extend it so I'm going to say uh, curve extend curve for example 2.2 extend that and give it a pipe it has to be the same radius as we had here and why not just give it a flat cap okay that's it now that we are finished let's just give them a custom preview for example display custom preview and a swatch so we can give it a color swatch just delete this color swatch title and let's just give it for extrusions this is the top maybe it's like yellow and surface b-rep edges to just see the edges that's it uh, again a custom preview for the extrusions and a b-rep edge to see the edges uh, custom preview for the rod we really don't need the edges here another custom preview For these pipes you can put it black we don't need the edges and that's it that's all you have to do and also another custom preview maybe for that small sphere we had at the top there it goes okay so now that we have this you can just simply rotate it what we have to do is to go and rotate the complete parts I know that there are lots of ways to design this differently as I told you you can give this different length you can have control on this curve but I think that that's just not necessary if you want to you can play with this but the concept is really important you have to understand the sh uh, the center and the rod is going inside these parts the movement of the line is really important because they have to sit on the circles and also uh, this little thing I think is also important if you want to give it a more artistic uh, visualization and we can also play with those graph mappers remember if you just update your design maybe some parts will not work so you have to double check especially for the uh, rod which is inside all of these parts or not remember that 
we have to, for example, for these circles, give it a little bit of transparency, maybe, so you can see inside that. But anyway, that's going to help you to understand what's happening. And as you can see, we can play with this rotation. That's it. OK, thanks for watching. And remember to like and subscribe to this channel. We have weekly tutorials about Grasshopper. And we will try to record more in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just put it below in the comments section. And I will be happy to answer. And what do you think about this tutorial? Was it useful? Did you learn lots of techniques? Or it was just a little bit hard? Any feedback will be really appreciated. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.